some of you were curious about how we have endless hot water and we were just now in Lowe's and so here it is explained and some of the parts that you'll need as well. We're going to show you guys, I guess, the parts that we use to assemble the Insta hot water heater. You can either use the PEX shock bite clamps or you can probably use the quick connects, which we'll show you those in a minute. You got to figure out the length that you want before all of ours is basically just made out of half inch. So we used half inch PEX and we hard piped it in or you can use the shark bite quick clamp. You will need some elbows for your 90s because when you come out on your low point drain, you're gonna 90 out to head to the back of the RV for your connection. So you would need four of these, one, two for the hot and two for the cold. That's what you'll need. They're uh, $5.98 each, so it could be a little bit expensive, but I think it's less expensive doing it this way than upgrading your water heater. Definitely gonna want a ball valve shut off for hot and cold so that way if you have to do some work on your insta hot water heater you can shut off the water to it and then be able to disconnect it and not shut the water off to the rv and you still have cold water while you're in the process of doing it half by half this is a ball valve these are about 11.28 each you may want to grab some couplers half by half couplers only because if you screw up, you can just cut the pipe, throw this on, and then you don't have to try to pull these off. Pulling these off with the clamps is a pain in the butt. That's from experience. This male adapter, half by half male adapter, this is what will end up, you will screw this into the low point drains on your RV. I just did a little bit of pipe dope, maybe some, um, Teflon tape around it and you can screw it in. Another good way to do this is to do it with quick connects because then you can just disconnect it and go. You don't have to worry about climbing under the RV and, and unscrewing it, which could be a pain in the butt, but it takes me about 30 minutes to set it up. 15 minutes to disassemble it, not too bad. You need two male adapters. Those go into your low point drain. So to connect it to the water heater, you're gonna need a half by half FMPT, which is a female adapter swivel. Our low point drain connections, it's similar to this uh, female adapter. And I was able just to replace those, but you're gonna want two of these, one for the hot, one for the cold. And this is what's gonna actually screw into the hot water heater uh, male. So you wanna make sure that you get female these. Maybe grab, you only need two, but um, go ahead and grab four. That way you always have an extra one on hand. We do, it's a little more expensive. These are 348 each, but it's worth it. PEX pipe, you could use either white or blue, half inch by 20 foot sticks, which is quite a bit. I ended up getting two 10 foot sticks or maybe three 10 foot sticks because then I just quick clamped them together. That's pretty much all you need to do it. Probably some Teflon tape, maybe some pipe dope, but you wanna make sure you use half inch. Um, I think these are only, these are 10 foot sticks for less than five bucks each, which isn't too bad. And you could always do blue for the cold and red for the hot. So when you connect it, you gotta remember which one's hot and which one's cold. If not, you could reverse the water. So you'll need half inch PEX clamps, half inch PEX clamps. These are 658 for a 10 pack. I just grabbed a couple of them because sometimes when you're quick clamping it, it can screw up. And then you're gonna need a PEX clamp tool. These are $64.98. And you can actually use this if you have a water leak in your RV. Um, you can use this same setup because most RVs have PEX anyway. If it's an older RV, you probably don't have PEX. You have the old gray pipe, I believe. A PEX pipe cutter. You could buy one of the fancy $40 ones, or you can go to your local hardware store and just go to the plumbing aisle and grab one that's red. It's a lot cheaper than a $40 clamp. This just cuts your pipe for you. A pro grade pipe cutter cuts up to one inch. You don't need a PEX crimp ring removal. You can just get um, a pair of dikes and just cut it and pop the PEX pipe off. And then you just got to measure from your low point drain to where you're going to have your water heater connected to determine how much pipe you want. 
if you've got, say, 15 feet, you probably want to get a 20-foot stick. That way you have a solid piece in between, but always connect your um, shutoff valve in between that, which kind of helps maintenance it. You could probably use the slip couplings, but then if you get it on and it leaks, then you have to try to push this in to slide it off the pipe. And I mean, it's not much cheaper than grabbing the, the clamp, PEX clamp, and then just do hard piping it. I would actually probably stay away from this for any, any repairs. The quick clamp setup from your low point to your water heater, that's something that I want to do, but I haven't done it yet. All right, so really it's a really simple process. You could probably watch a lot of videos on how to do it, but it's totally worth it to not have a five minute shower. 20 minute showers are so much better. And yes. then we've got a little bit of secret. Once you get your water heater set up and you get your temperature set and say you have a different temperature than what your wife has or your kids want, um, we accidentally found out that we can turn the water on on the, the sink. So if your shower's too hot, you turn the hot water on, which will cool down your shower. If you want your shower hotter, you turn the cold water on and it makes it hotter in the shower. That was by accident and it actually works and it's easier than going out each time to adjust the temperature for your shower when each person gets into it. So total, I think we spent $1.99 on the hot water heater and then parts. We could probably tally up what the parts cost, mm -hmm. but I think you're under Shit, if you're only 200 for the water heater plus all the parts, maybe another 150, you're probably looking at 350 bucks. If you live in colder areas for the winter time, we did heat tape our pipe um, and I did insulate it with the black pipe insulation, which was a pain in the butt to crawl under there during the winter. Um, I never did insulate the water heater on the stand that we built because we did have a we ordered a, a hitch for the bumper and I made a metal bracket at my brother's house to um, hang the water heater on. I still need to build a cover for it, insulate it. Oh, and then you need the ductwork for the top, which was pretty cheap too, but I don't know. Does that vent it? It vents on its own, but you want it so water can't, when it rains, the rain doesn't get into it. Maybe 350 at the max buying the tool, which isn't bad. And the water heater itself? Yeah, with the water heater, because the water heater was 199. Yeah. Um, and we got the 20 liter instead of the 18 liter. Because this is our second one, and there are different ones. You could just decide which one's best for you. This is which one we chose, and I think I like this one even better than the first one. Yeah, because the first one was Celsius, so <laughs> it took you a little while to figure out what your Celsius number was. And this one's Fahrenheit, so it has the regular temperature on it. When you first get it, it's going to take you a little bit of fine-tuning to realize where you want it. There were many days that we have been starting the shower, back out to fix the temperature. Start the shower, back out to fix the temperature. So don't be frustrated with that. You will have to fine tune yours to figure out what temperature is right for you. You do get endless. It is propane. It does have, uh, I think, 2D batteries for the igniter on it. So it is battery operated. You turn the water on and it, it gets hot instantly. Um, it does take a minute for it to run through your pipes until it comes out, but it is battery ignited, which is pretty cool. Propane tank, we use a five or a seven gallon. A lot of times it'll last us a good 10 days for each tank. Yeah, depending on how big your tank is. Yeah, and how many people are taking showers. If you're on the move a lot, I would suggest looking at the quick connects. It's kind of like a power washer quick connect. You can just probably leave. You could probably set it up where you screw it into your low point drain, quick connect it, and then all you got to do is pop the quick connects off of the water heater and your RV and throw the pipe in the RV and go. Like I said, it what takes me 30 minutes to set it up and probably about 30 minutes to take it down. Oh yeah, if you're on the move, you can still do it. Yeah. It's just going to take a little bit more of your time, but if you want that long, hot shower, it is worth it. Yeah. And if you're in the shower and it does go cold on you, just turn it off, 
turn it back on and it'll heat you right back up again if it even does that to you. Our old one used to do that. This one doesn't really do that so much. No, because I think we went from the 18 liter to the 20 liter, which made a big difference because we're getting more volume and it runs a little bit longer. Or if it goes cold, your shower's not over unless your propane is out. Yeah, <laughs> and if you're by yeah. yourself and the propane goes out, you, you're you done. Get your robe on and head out to switch your propane. Yeah, I wouldn't want to live without it. Oh, and You then... need this in your life. And then you do have to drain your water heater um, that's in your RV, which we haven't done that yet. So I do need to do the shutoff valves and um, drain it. But you do not want water to run through your water heater in your RV when you're using the Insta Hot. Um, you can, depending on how your setup is, ours has shutoff valves underneath the sink. Mm -hmm. Actually, is it under the sink or under the stove? There's, have, there's a little you know, compartment there that we can access him. it. <laughs> I have no um, idea. <laughs> we shut ours off so that way the only hot water that we are actually in, and um, we turn the electric off and the gas off to the RV uh, water heater. Okay, um, yeah. That way you're not running your hot water into the five gallon and then back into the RV and then you're going to have five gallons of cold water every time you do it. Totally not worth it. Just shut it off, turn it off, drain it, don't use it. Just remember, don't turn it on until you actually fill it back up with water because you could you could ruin your RV water heater. And this is a do-it-yourself project. You can literally do it yourself. Um, I got the concept from my friend Levi, told me about the instant water heater. I ordered it, um, look, looked at it, tried, you know, the first setup that we had, um, I just had a garden hose running to it and then hard piped into the um, hot water. And then I realized I could use the low point cold water to connect to the hot water heater and then use connect from the hot water to the low point for the hot water which mm -hmm. made it a little better instead of running a garden hose to it and if you're going to use a garden hose i mean what are they now like 50 bucks so it was totally a waste of money and i could have just put that into buying the the pex uh crypt tool which you can use to repair your rv we think this is a great idea do it at your own risk yeah we are not responsible, not responsible if you screw something up. Um, if you do want to do the process and you have questions. Just but leave a comment. If you need help, we could direct you in the right way. And again, it's at your own risk, but yeah. I'm not a professional plumber. Um, not at all. But uh, <laughs> it's pretty simple. Okay. Pretty simple process. Okay. I think the top of it was four inch, but the four inch pipe didn't slide over it. So I just used uh, some ventilation tape. Um, and then the cap, I actually had a leftover cap that I used, but it's just a dome cap with a screen on it. So that way water doesn't get down inside the, the Insta Hot. What right. I plan on doing is doing a wood cover with some uh, uh, foam, probably some half inch foam or three quarter or one inch foam to insulate it. This year we got, I think it was 20 degrees, felt like zero degrees. We did have to leave a drip in the bathroom just so the Instahot didn't freeze because it is copper pipe. Um, I think, didn't our first one freeze? Yeah, it froze. And that's how we ended up with our second one. Yeah, Zenon. I think we only really spent like 350 bucks to get the total set up. I mean, okay. you're, you're t and you don't have to buy extra parts. I just do because, um, I don't want to drive 15 minutes to the hardware store, but if you're five minutes from the hardware store and you want to get one, one, and one, I mean, do it. Yeah. You know, you don't need that many pieces. Okay. That's all I got. That's all we got.